Making and flying model rockets can be a lot of fun and it's fairly easy to do. It also does not have to cost you a lot of money. Uh, the biggest rocket on the end there is one I made. It's 50 inches. The rest of them are 2 to 3 feet and um, those size rockets would normally cost you 20, 30, 40 dollars in the kits whereas these all cost me under 10 dollars to build. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make another one today and show you some of the simple things um, techniques that I've used to make these out of really easy to find materials. Model rockets are pretty simple and they've got a few main parts to consider when you're uh, picking out materials. You're going to need uh, some kind of tube for, uh, for the, the body of the rocket. This is a thinner one that's, and then you've got thicker ones. Of course you can get these uh, quite easily from good old wrapping paper. Uh, I'm looking forward to when my wife's done with this one because it's nice and long. But a uh, good recommendation is hit up your dollar stores, Dollar Tree or 99 cent store. They all carry uh, carry full things of uh, wrapping paper that's usually really ugly, so it's perfect to donate a dollar so you can steal the tube. Uh, you're going to need some sort of nose cone. Some uh, very simple uh, nose cones that you can use are an Easter egg. You find one that happens to fit the tube uh, fairly well, and you can even use some, uh, some electrical tape around the top there, and that'll help it grip. And that's a very simple, easy nose cone. You can also make nose cones out of balsa wood. This is a chunk, a couple chunks of balsa wood I glued together. And I'm probably going to carve and do a nose cone for a smaller um, diameter tube like this. That's going to have a thin, shorter nose cone. Um, and then you're also going to have to get uh, fins. And uh, fins uh, you can make, of course, out of, out of balsa wood. Um, a very simple, cheaper way to go is just to make them out of cardboard. And I'm going to show you that process in detail and how they can still look rel relatively nice. Um, another inexpensive way to go for a cone that doesn't end up very attractive but is easy to do, you don't have to go shopping, is to use cardboard, whatever material you're using for your rocket, and to wrap it in a spiral. Use packaging tape to hold it together and you can make a little cone. Um, and then you can wrap a toilet paper roll, a smaller diameter, inside that to help it hold in there. I don't particularly like that option, it doesn't look that great, but it's doable and it's cheap and easy. Well, I already talked about the uh, idea of using an Easter egg as a nose cone. I'm going to go ahead and use that on this short stubby rocket. I'm going to make a nice short stubby one so it's easy to show on video. Plus, I don't have any short ones. Um, as far as cutting cardboard tube like this, uh, if you happen to have a bandsaw, it's an excellent option. Get a nice um, squared edge. If you don't, don't worry. One thing you can do is to trace a line around there using a piece of paper that you wrap around and uh, touch the ends overlap uh, right, and then trace that line and then use an X-Acto knife to cut it. And afterwards you just put it onto a piece of uh, something hard and flat with sandpaper and sand it and you'll have a nice crisp clean edge. I'm going to go ahead and move on talking about how to make your fins. I ended up using cardboard on this one because it's extremely cheap. You don't have to buy it, you just get it off a box and uh, not very difficult at all. Um, what, I, what I do is I, I find a template that I like by you know drawing on paper uh, using a straight edge and then cut it out, test it against the rocket. Uh, once you find one you like, use the template to trace the fins onto some cardboard. Cut them all out nice with some uh, heavy duty scissors or if it's pretty thick cardboard and won't cut nice with scissors, use your X-Acto knife. You can also sand the edges uh, on those to make them nice and crisp and clean with, with like a nice flat sanding block. Um, what I like to do since there's an exposed edge of cardboard for the corrugated inside that looks kind of interesting, I use some uh, good old electrical tape and I wrap it around. Here's one that I've completely finished with electrical tape on the edges, making those look nice. And then I, uh, I colored this one in with a black permanent marker. And as you can see, it makes for a pretty nice looking fin considering that it's made out of cardboard. One thing I forgot to mention is that if you have a nice thin edge of, on, your, on your fin like this where it can really easily bend, um, as you can see there, I soaked this one in cyanoacrylic glue, which is just super glue. Um, and it makes for a nice um, uh, sturdier fin portion right there where it could be really weak. Um, and that's pretty much all there is to making fins out of cardboard. Your other option is, of course, making them out of balsa wood. Here's one I, I've made for a different rocket. Um, and that's very easy to do as well. And it, very, very easy to sand, so if you mess up on your cutting, it's not a big deal. You can sand it to shape. Next thing I'm going to talk about is making your motor mount. You're going to need um, 
a uh, paper or a toilet paper tube, uh, some cardboard, and uh, you can use super glue, hobby cement, uh, and you're gonna need one of the motors. Some tape will be handy later, and we're gonna need. I'll talk about these little skewer deals in a sec. Uh, basically, what you're gonna do is take your uh, toilet paper roll, cut it down the middle, and trim it to a little past the length of your motor, and then you're gonna much more carefully than I'm doing now. Uh, wrap it extremely tightly, pushing down the whole time. And once you get it overlapped a little bit, start squirting some uh, super glue in there. Wrap it a little more, squirt some more super glue, wrap it more. And then you'll take super glue and make a bead all the way along the edge, really nice, touching all the edge. You'll um, roll it down and probably get super glue all over your hands. And then you're going to want to tape and pull it really tight and then do that all along the seam so that everything's held down. What you'll end up with is something like this. If the edges aren't nice and flush, what you can do is trim it with your bandsaw if you happen to have one, or do the paper trick where you wrap paper around, trace a line, and cut it with an X-Acto knife. And then sand the ends so they're nice. Um, and the motor um, fits in there very nice and tightly. You can see I kind of have to twist it in. And anyway, you'll push it in there until it's sticking out about a quarter of an inch or so. And um, you can take one of these little, uh, any kind of metal, little thin metal, gauge metal will work. These happen to be some little skewer deals that I found at the dollar store in a pack of ten for a buck. So they're handy and cheap. Um, and I bent, used some pliers to bend that out straight. And I cut it off so that this was about the uh, depth of the inside of the tube. And anyway, You'll use something to push down there until it butts up against the base of the motor. And then you use your thumb to hold the place. And that way you can gauge where to drill a small hole with like a 16th inch drill bit or twisting an a exacto knife around in circles. And what you'll end up being able to do is sticking that through there. And that will hold the motor in um, right where it's supposed to be. You push that up against there. And then you'll get your pliers and go just past the end of the motor, you can take this thing out and you'll you'll bend this over until it's like that. You want to test it, pop it back in there. Oop, let's see here. And it should be just over the edge of the motor like that. Then you'll take it out yet again and trim it to where it's just about a you know a little less than a quarter inch sticking off there. And um, that will work out real nice to hold your motor in place. And then when you're done, you just kind of push that out of the way. Um, you'll take some uh, tape and uh, right around the middle, you'll wrap around to hold that in there, or hold that down. Actually, I guess that's about the middle of the motor mount, not the middle of the metal clip. We'll see why later. I like uh, this good old, um, whatchamacallit, masking tape because glue will still stick to it. So you get that there, and then you're going to need to make your little motor mount rings. And what these are, um, are the, they're going to go, go over the outside to hold that centered in the tube. So you take your tube and draw a circle on the cardboard around the outside of it. Do that twice because you need two rings. And then you're going to take your motor mount and hold that in the center of those. Draw a circle. Um, cut those out with scissors. The center holes you can do with an X-Acto knife or if you're lucky and you have a Forstner bit that's pretty close, if it's a little bigger that's actually good. Um, you can use that. That's what I did here. My, mine was a little bit too big. As you can see there's a gap so a little trick is you just take some cardboard uh, from your toilet paper roll, wrap it around there and then when you slide it on um, you can create a nice tight fit, fill in that gap a little bit. And uh, if I can get this assembled without taking an eternity. I'll show you the general look of the thing as it's completed. You'll have one motor mount pretty close to the front and then uh, one motor mount kind of on the back end there. And uh, you'll glue those with this hobby cement that you can get at the dollar store too. And in cents store, just glue both sides and that'll make a nice uh, solid fit. Make sure you test these before you glue them that they fit in the base of the tube. After we're done with that, we'll actually stick this in the base of the tube after the glue is dried. And you'll, you'll squirt a little in down in there in the end, shove it in, and then squirt a little bit more in 
around behind this one so that when you shove it in you'll get a little bit of glue and you don't have it squeezing out all over the edges. See if I can get that. And then after you get it in there like this, um, you can take some glue and squirt around the edge there too. And you'll have a nice sealed air or motor mount for your rocket.